How many of you found that to be true? He is faithful, even when we're not. And that's what's amazing about him. Well, tonight we're going to begin in chapter 1. We don't have a lot of scripture references this evening, which is good because I don't like uh, to over inundate us with scriptures because I feel like they just start at some point just bouncing off of our our heads. You know, I, I feel like if I get one scripture and I chew on that and I get something out of it and it alters something in my life, then that's that's good. But just knowing 20, 30 scriptures and not having any change happen, what's the point, right? So we're going to be students of the word, but we're also going to be wise as we go about it. Now, I will say this before we begin. This is definitely deeper than Joyce Meyer's book, um, and, and I'm not taking anything away from that. I love that study. I'm glad we did it. I'm still learning from that study. Uh, but I would just encourage you tonight, as Pastor prayed for us on Wednesday, and those who may still be wanting to receive your prayer language, the key is, and I'm sure uh, Miss Alita would agree the key is don't try and rationalize or or think it out you're not going to be able we're not going to be able to figure out a supernatural happening in a natural mind so it really comes to just lord you said i could have it and and you know my dad would say i, I remember specifically the, the night i was baptized in the holy spirit i was eight years old my sister was 11 my other sister was 14. We were all in the back of the car on the way home from a, 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 a revival. And that's when revival Sunday night church, you know, yeah. I don't know, it's rough. <laughs> but but back then, and, and I just kept saying, well, Dad, I don't know. He said, well, just start saying thank you, Jesus. And, and when something comes to your mind, it may seem like a, a baby word or or babble or you may oh I heard somebody else pray that so say it and as soon as we say it boom our faith then now boom it's that prayer language is activated within us and within our spirit it'll flow out we will never be able to figure it out rationalize it I was trying to work with someone for a long time and they were they were intelligent in the natural that makes sense very difficult for somebody who who is intelligent and and at times may think they're intelligent it's it's hard to help them receive a free gift but that's what it is it's a free gift and so we just have to look at it that way so as we go tonight it can happen to you anywhere anytime I was in the back seat of the car we're riding home from church we had a 30 mile drive on a two-lane highway and I just remember, okay, and I said it. And it was one word, and then it turned into two words, and then it turned into three words. And then I just prayed those three words for oh, even at eight years old. And then they turned into more words. So, you know, take that for what it's worth tonight. If, if you're desiring that prayer language, it's yours to have. It's not based on, if salvation is not based on what we do, neither is this gift. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, let's take a look tonight. <clears throat> Chapter 1, the Holy Spirit's work within on page 7. In the eternities of times past, a vast, complex plan for mankind unfolded on the inside of God. In his infinite wisdom, he left nothing out as he looked down through the ages. He passed through every generation, generation after generation, planning every intricate detail of every life that would live on the face of the earth. God's desire was to, one, recover as many as possible from Satan's rebellious camp, and two, to gather unto himself a people he could call his family. Now, if you look up one definition of family in the dictionary, now they tried to change it here recently. It used to say man and woman. Now it says two parents, being very vain. But think about what this definition represents. Family can represent all the descendants of a common ancestor. Well, let's look at that spiritually. All the descendants of a common ancestor. Who's our common ancestor? God, Jesus, Adam, Eve, right? 
goes on to say this, somewhere in the midst of this divine planning session, long before the eons of time began, God came across your name. Then he formulated a perfect plan just for you that is unlike any other plan for any other person who's ever been born. Let's take a look at my favorite scripture. It's not in here. I threw this one in here because I like this scripture and I like us to remember what it says. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. For I know, now I chose the NIV specifically for the verbiage. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Verse 12. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. And 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. See, in that seeking and in that finding, we'll find God's perfect plan for us. We'll discover what that plan is and we'll realize that his plan is always to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us the future. The message Bible says the future that we hope for. So he formulated this perfect, perfect plan. Imagine God the Father looked out on across the great void of space and time and saw the moment when you would live on this earth. Then he decided precisely how that moment should be filled. God conceived a wonderful plan for every one of us. In his plan, we were predestined to become his sons and daughters at the cross, but one potential obstacle stands between us and God's perfectly conceived Purposes. Underline this. Using the free will God has given us, we must choose to walk in the plan he has ordained for our life. God looks for a way to approach each one of us to present his personal plan for our lives. He begins with the preaching of the cross that encourages us to accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. If we accept Jesus, we take our first steps into the plan God predestined for us before the foundations of the world. This is important. But if we reject him, then like so many before us, we will live and die without ever taking the first step, salvation, into the divine purpose for our existence. Once when I was ministering in India, I looked out at the crowd of thousands before me and marveled that God could have a specific plan for every individual in that vast multitude. The truth is, God formulated a perfect plan for every single person born since Adam. He only waits for each person to find out what the plan is and then choose to walk in it. Okay, let's park there for a minute. He, he only wants, what's that say? For each person to find out what the plan is and then to choose to walk in it. So how do we find out the plan? We just read the scripture that told us. Let's go back to 29, uh, uh, Jeremiah 29, 12. Then you'll call on, on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And then 13, you will seek me and find me with, when you seek me with all your heart. Psalm 37 verse 4 speaks very similarly. There's some similar language in there. So he tells us there, God's plan for us is that we find out what the plan is that he chose for us from the beginning of time, and then it's our job to walk in it. Well, how do we know how to do that? By spending time in his presence. When we spend time in his presence, who's communicating our spirit our, our, our reborn spirit is communicating with the very spirit of God. And so in that communication, I'm receiving direction. I'm receiving instructions. I'm receiving, maybe it's just health for myself. Maybe it's wellness for my mind or my heart. But there's ministering going on to when I'm praying in the spirit and when I'm operating in the spirit because God's divine purpose for me doesn't exist outside of his Holy Spirit understand that it just doesn't work that way so he goes on to say this let's take a look at Matthew 7 13 and 14 now we're going to look at this in the NLT so it'll be different than your verbiage there you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate the highway to hell is broad 
I'm on the highway. Dummy. Do you even realize what you're saying? No. I always marveled at that. People wishing people happy birthday that were rock stars and things like that. And, and how much they love them. And I bet you're doing this and that in heaven. And I'm thinking, you think they're in heaven? I don't know. Because it's a narrow gate. We can't just be doing and saying and living and acting and thinking and, and talking and, and making up our own rules and think that we're going to be on that narrow road. If we look around and see a bunch of people with us, chances are we're on the wrong road. It goes on to say this, the highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose it. Let's look at 14. But the gate to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it. Jesus' words indicate that the majority of people in their lives with one final journey into a godless eternity without him, without Jesus. A person can live and die and go to hell without knowing Jesus or fulfilling God's plan for their life. However, that doesn't change the fact that God had a perfect plan of redemption and a purpose for that person. They just never discovered it. Why not? Well, maybe no one told them. Would you believe me if I told you that at a, a, a memorial one time I had somebody who was not a, a church part of our church and they they uh, they go to church and and they're very nice people and great people but they they thought that mourning was a sin that they were sinning by mourning because the Bible said well you're not supposed to be sorrowful for those who are dead think about if that is the case with people who attend church somewhat regularly. And that's your understanding. You don't, you've never been taught the freedom of Jesus. You've never been taught these things. Imagine how many other people don't know anything at all. It should break our hearts that people are on their way to hell and that they're on that wide road and are we looking at them, hey, don't wanna go where they're going. Good thing we're over here. The Holy Spirit would never lead us to love ourselves alone. He'll always lead us back to the love of God, the love of people and the people that Jesus died for that are just like us. So he goes on to say this. We just have to choose to obey him. So somewhere, somehow, in God's great and marvelous plan for creation, your name came up, and God in his eternal wisdom and counsel laid out a perfect plan for your personal life. Then the Holy Spirit did a wonderful thing. He listened intently to every detail of your life as the Father planned your birth, your ministry, yes, you have a ministry, your prosperity, and every aspect of your redemption and personal life. In fact, the Holy Spirit is the one who has been put in charge of overseeing God's plan for your personal life. No one can represent that plan better than he can. He was there. Circle that. He was there. He heard God the Father plan every minute, uh, every minute detail. Again, we didn't create ourselves. We didn't create ourselves. Genesis 126 says, let us make or create man in our image. Genesis 1.26, in our image. Well, that's not just God. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's one scripture reference, uh, uh, and, and I don't want to misquote where it's at, but it, it references once things were done and we were pleased. So to understand that the Holy Spirit was there in the planning of your life, listening to every detail, every part that God had laid out and taking note and understanding what it is that has been designed for your life, for my life. That's incredible to me. We didn't create ourselves, God did, and that's not all. He goes on to say this, this third person of the Godhead stands face to face and absolutely co-equal in every way with other two members of the Godhead, the great Jehovah and the mighty Logos Jesus or the word. But upon your 
regeneration as a child of God, the Holy Spirit actually consented to take up residence in our spirits and to offer his services to us. And one of the main reasons he came was to pray for you. Why did God send the Holy Spirit to live inside of you? So he could change us into the image of his son. And in, the order to, in order to accomplish that goal, the Holy Spirit brought his own prayer language with him so he could pray for all that concerns you. With that prayer language, he gets involved directly with you in a one-on-one -on -one relationship that is independent of anyone else, even of your own mind. When the Holy Spirit prays for you, he takes the plan he hears the Father say or utter and pours it through our spirits. And the language he uses to express that plan as it flows through us is the supernatural language of tongues. Now, there has often been confusion. The pastor addressed it on Sunday. And I will just reiterate, there are two separate baptisms that we're referring to here. The baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is for everyone. If you read on in, in Acts, when Peter enters the house of Cornelius, remember, Pastor addressed this a little bit as well, Cornelius was not a Jew. And so when they go and, 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 and Peter presents the Holy Spirit and they receive the Holy Spirit, um, That gift, it was, it was then said later in Scripture in that passage that this gift is for you and your children and your children's children and to as many who are far off as the Lord God calls. So that's everyone. And that's a gift for everybody. But then they're speaking in tongues in a church service where you may hear Miss Bonnie deliver a message in tongues and then Mr. Bill or Pastor, or I think I interpreted something on the Sunday I preached. That's as the Spirit wills. And it's not for everybody. That's, it, it, he can use anyone who's willing, but it's a gift that the Spirit chooses to give. And, and so that uh, occurrence, when that takes place, that message is for the body. And it's to encourage the body or to challenge the body or to both. And so the interpretation comes, which is a gift as well, so that the body can benefit from what's being said. But if we're praying in, in our private prayer language, it doesn't benefit our minds in a way that we understand what's being said. There's no interpretation. Although, how many of you have been praying in the Spirit and you knew what you were praying? So that happens too. But see, there's a that praying in the Spirit, evidence of speaking in tongues for everybody. Everybody. You'll hear people try and take that out of the Bible. They'll try and say, oh, that was just for back then. Well, then why does it say you, your children's children, and their children, and many as far off into the, whom the Lord God calls? That's not everyone. That stops here. It doesn't sound right to me. I mean, if you know, the Holy Spirit is still for today. And so it's important, again, as a church that we don't draw lines. Well, I don't understand. So, okay, I understand that. Believe me, I, I grew up in a spirit-filled church, and Amy did not. And boy, the first time we took her to church... I prayed, Lord, please don't let a prayer line break out. Please. You know what happened? A prayer line broke out. There's people down in the spirit, people speaking in tongues. She's looking at me. You know, we're 30 miles from home. She's not, she can't run. She could. She lived in that town growing up. But, but you know what? My, she, she sensed something was real. Enough that didn't scare her off completely, but she was a little bit weirded out by it. Because, see, growing up in that town, we were the Holy Roller Church. And we had that reputation. Kind of like, there's kind of that reputation here sometimes. But the truth is, my mother didn't try and force it. I, I had the, the ability to speak in tongues, but I didn't have the ability to help her receive it. I would, I, I, you know, as a teenager, how many of you know, we don't, we're not pushing and pursuing the things of God all the time. We're, we're doing our own thing and then a little bit of church. 
And so my mom fortunately was able to explain to her and show her this is where, where it's at in the Bible. And this is what the difference is between the two. And you know, it was years and years. In fact, we had gotten hired at Calvary. I think Logan was born by that time years later. And we were praying one night in a church uh, service. And her and I were praying for someone and I was leading the prayer. And I heard speaking in tongues. And I'm looking at the kind of, I'm trying to see, is the person I'm praying for speaking in tongues? Like, no, it was Amy. And so I, it tickled me. Uh, but at the same time, I was a little offended. Like, really? And so in classic, if you know Amy or get to know her, classic Amy form, I said, when did that happen? She said, none of, my, none of your business is my prayer language. <laughs> okay, well, praise the Lord, you got it. But you know, there were years that were in between that. So sometimes, now, looking back, she probably would say, I could have gotten that as soon as I wanted it. But it was a process that she was working through. So understand, the Holy Spirit, he wants to take residence so he can change us to be who God's made us to be. And when he prays for us, he's praying the divine will of God for us. And, and so when we give him opportunity, let's pick up at the bottom of page eight, he'll use that language to pray for your calling. He'll, he'll use it to pray out the plan of God to edify you and to charge you with his power. He will lend himself to you as your faith allows. Circle that. That means it's dependent upon us as my faith allows to be activated within my spirit. He will pull us out of everything Jesus set us free from and into everything Jesus says that we are in him. If you want to, you can go into your room and pray in the supernatural language in that supernatural language for two, four, or even 12 hours. And God, the Holy Spirit, will create every single word that comes out of your mouth. Underline this. It's your choice to pray or not to pray. Hmm. Well, it's really not my choice, PT. I, I, I've got kids, and I'm busy, and, and work calls, and... It's a choice. How many of you would agree we prioritize what's important to us? We make room and time for things that are important to us. Even when there's not room and time, we'll carve out room and time to get those things done because they need to be handled. But the truth is God doesn't want us carving out time for him when everybody else has gotten the best of us. He wants us first to be that he's our first love that he's that first place we go that the Holy Spirit is the first person we come in contact with earlier today I had an issue that came up and it was it, it, it was you know how many of you know the devil likes to work on our flesh and boy it, it was a it was a, a poke at my flesh and I, I, I got riled up and uh, privately and I went into my office and I remembered what I've taught you all many times. Pray in the Spirit. Just begin to pray in the Spirit. You know what? I, I look back now at how I addressed what took place. There's been growth. So to me, the Holy Spirit will always help us grow, but we have to allow Him access. I had to, I had to stop and say, I know right now I need to pray in the Spirit. Now, I chose to then go do it. Or I could, yeah, I know I need to do that. But the Holy Spirit is more than just our guide, so to speak. He's the power that you and I may feel lacking at times. You know, if, if I go to Springfield in my vehicle, it's slow. It's slow for a reason. It needed to be slow because when I have cars that aren't slow, I like to go fast. But you know what? If I put a bigger engine in it, a different transmission and all these things, I could get to Springfield a lot faster, right? The Holy Spirit can take us miles and minutes, miles and minutes, praying in the natural, 
So it's not that we can't still get there, but the Holy Spirit is what brings the power and enables us to live that life of power, but it's our choice. Every time we do choose to pray, you'll come out of that time of prayer more edified in his plan and purpose for you than if you hadn't done it. God's plan for you is in the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is in you. Again, that's why we can't figure out God's will with our mind or in our flesh, because God is not a mind. He's a spirit, and he's speaking to our spirit. So again, that old radio analogy I think I've given you before. If I'm listening to 90.5 and you're on another channel, it doesn't mean that there's not things playing and being said on 90.5. And if I switch over to that, I'm going to hear the same thing that you may be hearing, or I may hear, hear it differently but I'm still going to be on the right channel. See, sometimes we just got to get switched over and get out of our mind. Well, God, I'm trying to think about how you would have me to do this or what you would have me do in this situation. God, what should I? Those are good questions, but at some point, Holy Spirit, lead and direct me. Thank you for the answer that, that it's going to come. And that peace is my position of power. When I have peace on a matter, that's the Holy Spirit's indicator. You're on track. When I'm lacking peace, I should stop. It's that whole traffic light, red, yellow, green. Peace, go. No peace, but not a red light, No, not a definite no. Pray it through, slow up. Keep praying until that becomes clearer and clearer. Red light, stop. The Holy Spirit will direct us just like that. Don't say that. Red. Well, you should say that to that person. You need to encourage them and bless them and speak something and get something for them and just bless them. Okay. See, to me, the Holy Spirit's always speaking to us, and it's always to love not only God, but love the ones that God has placed in our life and to lead them back to him so that they can find the Holy Spirit and they can be enabled with that power and endued with that power, and, and, and they can then take that home to their families, generation after generation after generation. I don't know about you, but I'd love to see my kids have kids and their kids involved in kids' ministry helping out in junior high and helping out in senior high. And then when they get in here, helping out with sound or helping out with different things. And then they have kids, generation after generation after generation. Amen. Holy Spirit inspired. And that's how we're going to be led into those seasons. We won't be led there by trying to figure it out and think it out. God's plan for us is in the Spirit and the Holy Spirit is in us. The Holy Spirit is armed with the knowledge of everything he has heard about God's redemption plan for you before the foundations of the earth. And every time he searches your heart, he does it with the intention to pray that plan. The mind of God concerning you, praying that plan into existence in your life. Even the Holy Spirit, notice that, understands the power of words. He's praying that plan over us. He's speaking it over us. Let's take a look at page 9 tonight. This is a deep study, so we may not get as far each week, but I would encourage you to keep going because it's, there's a lot of treasure in here. Page 9 says this, and we'll wrap up. I've been filled with the Holy Spirit a long time, and I still marvel that the third person of the Godhead would choose to come and take up his abode with us. To think that at our invitation, he fills us in baptism and oversees God's plan for our lives is more grace than we could ever hope for. As the, and the supernatural language he brings with him to help us find that perfect plan is perhaps the greatest phenomenon of all. The more of God's plan we find, the more of the Holy Spirit, who is the executor of spiritual law, will be able to bring natural law under subjection in our lives. Natural law governs the circumstances that surround us, causing things to go for or against us, making us either rich or poor, sick or healthy, happy or sad. But God designed natural law to be made subordinate to spiritual law. And since the divine plan for our lives comes from the very heart of God, it is enforced as spiritual law. Again, he created everything, so he has authority over everything. He has power over everything. We're going to stop there for tonight and open it up for some conversation. Now, I would encourage you to keep reading because there's some great uh, passages in here to study out and some more uh, to dive into there. But I will say this, the Holy Spirit 
unfortunately being the dividing line in, in, in churches, my question is, once we know these things, what's, what's our reasoning for not engaging? Is it fear? Because the devil will use that. He loves to use fear when it comes to praying in tongues specifically. You know, we've been told it's a prayer he can't interpret. That we're speaking, the Bible says, mysteries to God. Or mysteries, you know. And, and God will reveal those things to us through his spirit. But there's times where when I pray in the spirit, even though I don't know what I'm saying, I'm still edified within myself. My heart, my mind, I have peace. I, I, it brings me to that place of center. And it takes me out of myself. And so to understand, when he said the Holy Spirit is co-equal with God the Father, God the Son, and Jesus, that seems hard to believe. Well, how can he be co-equal? But, but he is. And he's a person. So let's open it up tonight and talk about uh, maybe some things that you, you have come to mind when, when we were studying this out. Anybody? It's that first person usually. There you go, Rob. Uh, you said something a moment ago about, you know, sometimes we don't even know what we're praying when we're praying in the, in the Spirit. Um, you know, but God knows. Sometimes, maybe it's just me because I'm weird, but sometimes when I pray in the Spirit, it's like there's like a slide that go through my my brain of things that I know that need prayed for as I'm praying in the spirit it's just like this thing pops up and this thing and I don't change I mean it's just prayer language right but it's just like it's just, okay there's this one okay now this now this type of thing happens sometimes it doesn't sometimes it's if it's a spontaneous type of thing it's just something that felt the you know kind of well up right I get like a pressure in my chest almost about it and it's like I gotta I need to go pray or I'm gonna explode yeah um, not in a bad way just right. it's just like it's, it's gotta come out right um, but yeah that's what I found that lots of times if, if I'm setting this when I'm setting aside time and it's intentional on purpose that it's like things just flash as I'm sitting there praying that lots of times those things I've forgotten about yeah you know so. yeah anybody else relate to that mom go ahead next I, I, that's kind of what I was saying. Sometimes I've, I've just known what I was praying. I just knew what I was praying. In general. Not necessarily specific specifics. Sometimes that occurs. But sometimes when you're praying in the Spirit, again, like you said, there'll be, there'll be enough. You, you won't have the pictures or you won't have the... And other times, of, oh, I'm, I'm praying for this person right now. I don't know what it is, but I'm praying for that. I know who it is. Mom, go ahead. I found out that when I'm praying not in the spirit. It's more my ideas, mm -hmm. my words, and they may be good, but when I pray in the spirit, they're his perfect. Yeah. His perfect will, his perfect word. Yeah. And a perfect prayer for the needs of whatever we're praying for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another good point because we can kind of taint our prayers sometimes with our own desires. Well, Lord, help me with this and help me with that. And, and, but when we start praying in tongues, we take our, ourselves out of the picture. And, and so... It's the value. I mean, and, and, and there's no shame having not received your prayer language. No shame in that. God, but again, God has it for you, and it's, it's available, and, and it will help change your life. Someone else. So now, yeah, Bonnie. We got, we'll, we'll come. Who we have? We'll go Bonnie, and then who we had next here. Um, I remember, you know, you were talking about sometimes when you're praying in tongues, and you know, you, you know what you're praying. And you know, nine times out of 10, when I'm at home and I do that, I intentionally do that, set that time aside. And many times, I have one certain room that I go into. And when I go in that room, I, I say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in here. Yeah. Let me tell you, he comes in. And when I pray in the Spirit, many times, I get the interpretation of that in English. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, I write that out. I've yeah. written many a time I write that out. And it always is usually about my own family, the interpretation of it. Yeah. And it's wonderful. Yeah. And and like I said earlier, you know, there's a gift. There's a, a gift of, of speaking in tongues for the body, you know, uh, for the corporate uh, body's benefit. And then the... Uh, 
interpretation of it. As I said, Bill is interpreted, Bonnie is given by pastors, interpreted by interpreted. So again, that's as the Spirit wills. But it's completely appropriate and biblical. And I think sometimes, maybe if we could just show someone where it's at, here's where it says it, they may still reject it, but if we can point back to God, then it's not us saying it. It's, it's the Word saying it. Yeah, go ahead. You know, and, and Matthew says what's bound in heaven, bound on earth, and what's loosed in heaven is loosed on earth. And, and, and it is. There is a, uh, the Spirit is always talking to us. He's always speaking, but, but sometimes we're just so busy. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I've had my idea of God's plan for my life. And, and I stamp, try to stamp God's approval on that plan. Say, we're good with this, right? God, not, not so much. And so I think sometimes we can be so involved in trying to do all the right things and trying to, to get ourselves where we want to be in life and, and achieve what we want to achieve. But are we achieving what we were predestined to achieve? Or are we just achieving things that have no value? I want to invest my time in, in a way that there's eternal value. If I'm getting upset about something, I want it to be eternal. If I'm thinking about something, I want it to be eternal. But to get to that point, we got to spend more time in his presence and less time leading ourselves. So we're going to have some opportunity over the next few weeks to really dive in and, and open up some of, of some things that may have brought some confusion or some things that you just may not have clarity on, we're going to bring clarity to it. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And freedom isn't earned in a sense with God. He, he provided our freedom. He provided all that we need through Jesus. And, and, and He has a plan for us. And I've counseled, I don't know how many people, I don't know what, plan is for my life me either the Holy Spirit does he created God created you in in, in uh, cahoots so to speak with the Holy Spirit with Jesus designed you made a plan for your life knows every hair on your head and so as you go through your week this week I would just encourage you to remember you know something try this try this with me it works. I'm telling you, it works. When you wake up in the morning, just take a few moments before you get out of bed and just say, Lord, thank you for this day. Holy Spirit, I welcome you into my day. When you say that, you can feel him. Boom. Like, here I am. I'm ready. I'm ready to lead you today. Thank you for leading me. Thank you for guiding me. Thank you that I don't say something, do something outside of you. Thank you for your presence in my life. Two minutes. Try it. How many of you will try it with me? Don't raise your hand if you won't. Good. Try it. I want to hear the praise reports because I know it puts us in a different frame of mind. It, it, it makes us accountable. we got time for one more and then we're going to pray. Uh, okay, we're going to do that right 
at the end here. Go ahead, Michelle, real quick. Um, anyone who's having trouble getting their prayer language, I was there. I did not grow up in a Holy Roller church. I grew up in a church where um, the people that spoke in tongues had their own classroom, and they were the weird ones in the church. That's the church that I grew up in. So I got in my own way a lot trying to get my prayer language because I, I had to unlearn that. Mm -hmm. um, and I also had some trust issues. And when someone was like, you know, I was surrounded by people and they were like, just open your mouth and let it come out. Oh my gosh, I think I was biting the inside of my lip. I was <laughs> yeah, like, nope, right. not happening. Right. And um, somebody, and I can't remember who it was, told me to just turn the praise and worship music on mm -hmm. and just, just start doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And I started babbling and started doing the things. It didn't quite feel like it was the Holy Spirit, but I was trying, I was doing something. And um, when it finally busted loose, that's exactly what was going on. I, I, I'm I, amazed that I was actually in front of the church when it happened. I was in a prayer line. But there was so much going on that I wasn't thinking about the people that were around me. I wasn't thinking about the people that nobody could hear me. I could have screamed at the top of my lungs. Nobody could have heard me. There was music going. Everybody was praying. And it was so loud. And I think that's when I finally was able to just let that out. So my advice is to crank up the praise and worship music yep. and just open your mouth. Yeah, that's good advice. We're going to close in prayer, and then we'll have Susan share her prayer her testimony with us. Father, we thank you for tonight. Lord, thank you for your word. And thank you for this book that we're studying. Lord, we know that your Holy Spirit gives us life and power in a way that we can't imagine. Father, I thank you tonight that as we leave this place, if we're struggling, Lord, that we would just rest in you and know you created us. Father, that we can't earn this. We can't figure it out. We can't we, we just got to accept it as a gift from you. And we thank you tonight that it become that simple. Just like a gift from someone else that, that wants to share, that we would just receive it. And I thank you tonight that as music's playing and as they're positioning themselves in a place to receive, Father, I just thank you that you're always faithful. Thank you for praise reports, and I thank you for just new life being shed abroad, not only within our hearts, but in our church and in our homes. We give you praise for it tonight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, Susan, real quickly, go ahead and share your prayer.